Oi, pessoal, tudo bom? Hello, everyone. Tudo bom, gente? Hello, everyone. Welcome to this live Q&A. Oi, pessoal, tudo bom? Hello, everyone. Wait, wait, wait. So, I'm having some troubles with my microphone. Just give me a second. I am going to change the microphone. Sorry about that. <laughs> Technical issues. Uh, let me know if you guys can see me and hear me well. I'm going to change my microphone. Wait. Wait. I'm going to use this new one. Wait. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can change my microphone here. Uh, So I'm trying to use this one instead. Can you disconnect this one so I can use this one? Also, oh, okay, Veronica, tudo bom? Oh, okay, so how about now? Did it change? I think it's the, there is some interference um, from my light. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> tudo bom, gente? Is the, is the sound better now? Let me know. Ok, ok. Muito melhor? Sim? <laughs> so sorry about that. Uh, it's, it's complicated. I'm using this light and for some reason just uh, makes the sound very bad. <laughs> ok, tudo bom, gente? Let's get started again. <laughs> Whenever we have these live classes, a lot of uh, technical issues can happen. <laughs> Thank you for your patience and thank you for staying with me. Okay, so welcome to this Q&A. I'm here to help you with your Portuguese. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Use the chat. I can read. I can see your um, well, names and comments in the chat. I see Shannon, Gringo, Glatz, tudo bom? Patrick, Ana, James, uh, Queen, Veronica, tudo bom? Christopher. Olá, so good to see you all of, all of you here. Muito bom. So if you're new to my channel, uh, every Tuesday I post a new video on my YouTube channel, a new lesson, and once a month on the first or second uh, Thursday of the month, I teach this live class to answer your questions and review some important uh, content that I covered in the last videos. Uh, so I'm here to answer your questions and help you with your Portuguese. Before we get started, think about your questions and write down uh, in the chat, and I'm going to read your, your questions. And if I don't see your question, you can just copy and paste again the same question, because sometimes it is hard for me to read all the comments. Uh, but before we get started, I want to tell you that my next courses is start in February. Uh, so if you're looking for a Bra uh, Brazilian Portuguese course, go take a look at on my website to see the courses available. Uh, registration will be open in January and classes start in the first week of February. Okay, so uh, you'll find all the information about my courses on my website, speakingbrazilian.com forward slash courses. Tá bem? Muito bom, but in the meantime, if you want to study Portuguese today, now, this month, I have a lot of free resources available. YouTube channel, podcast, blog, a lot of things, uh, free courses. So uh, you'll find a link to my free courses available below in the description of this video, tá bem? So go take a look. Muito bom, gente. So I'm going to see your questions, read your questions. Vamos começar. Ah, so one question from, oh, como você usa a frase quem nunca? So this, <laughs> this is a fun uh, expression. Uh, I don't think that everyone in Brazil uses that, but it's very common in, in Sao Paulo and maybe other places. So quem nunca is when someone says something and, and then you want to say, who never, who never did that? <laughs> so that's the short, quem nunca is a short a version of quem nunca fez isso, né? Who have never done that? <laughs> Who never did that, right? So that's the meaning. So usually, uh, usually we talk, use this phrase when you're talking about something 
funny or something maybe that you should not be doing, but you do it anyway. <laughs> uh, I cannot think of an example right now. Uh, let me see. I don't know if you uh, stay up late and you should go to bed early, but you stay up late. And then you could say, ah, quem nunca, né? Quem nunca fez isso? Who never did that? Who never have done that before? Usually use this expression with friends. It's a very informal expression. I hope it, I helped. I, I, it's hard to explain expressions sometimes because they, they, uh, the translation doesn't work. You have to explain the meaning and you have to find context. Então, uma pergunta do Reskelin. Qual é a diferença entre tudo e todo? I have a video about that on my YouTube channel. I recommend you go take a look so you see more examples. But uh, since I'm teaching this class in English, it's just so easy to translate. Tudo, with the U sound, tudo, the first one, means everything. And todo means every or all. So the word tudo is used by itself. It does not vary. There is no feminine, masculine, plural. And the word todo is always used with a noun. So todo dia, toda semana, todos os dias, todas as semanas. So you have feminine, masculine, and plural of the word todo, and it is always used with a noun, and it has to agree with the gender and number of that noun. Okay, so I hope that helps. If you want to learn more about this, go to my channel and type uh, speaking Brazilian, tudo todo, you find a video about this with a lot of examples. Tá bem? Muito bom. Looking for more questions. So, Ana, this is a very good question. What is the meaning of the word embora? It depends. This word, you know, many, most of words have many different meanings. This word, uh, depending on the way that you use in a sentence, have, can have very different meanings. Uh, so, the word embora, when you use it with the verb ir, to go, when you say eu vou embora, eu vou Embora, it means I'm leaving, I'm going away. So if you are, usually when you go away and you don't come back to a place, you're going home. Uh, então, por exemplo, you are in a party and you say to your friend, I'm tired, I'm going home, I'm leaving. You could say, eu vou embora. Tô cansada, vou embora. It means you're going home. You're leaving the party, you're not coming back. Uh, so this is the word with the verb. It has to be used with the verb Ir, eu vou embora, ele vai embora, nós vamos embora, eles vão embora, okay? But if you use this word, uh, this word can also be used by itself with a totally different meaning uh, in a more formal language. You could say, it has the same meaning of the word although in English. For example, if you want to say, although, even though it is cold outside, I would like to go for a walk. In Portuguese, you could use the word embora. Embora esteja frio lá fora, eu quero sair para caminhar. So, the word embora here, it's a little bit more formal, but it's a common word. We use it a lot. And it, it requires the, the use of the, the present subjunctive tense. Okay? I hope that helps. Muito bom, muito bom. Looking for more questions. Another fun question, olha só. So really depends of the context. Um, so olha means look. So olha só means look. So if you were showing something, if you're pointing at something, olha, but olha só, it's usually one when you are explaining something, you could say, look, this is what this means, olha só. Um, let me see, if, uh, I'm thinking about other different contexts, but it means look, and usually when you're talking with someone. So if you, if you translate the words into English, it does not make sense, but it is, it is an expression, a colloquial way of talking with your friend, you wanna show something. Um, look, this is when you want, you want to explain something, you could, you could use this expression, olha só. Uh, so, look, I'm going out, when I come with me, olha só, estou, vou sair, quer vir comigo? It, it's a very informal use, you don't have to use it at all, uh, it's not necessary, but it's just a way of speaking. You know, a lot of expressions, they are completely 
uh, optional. You can use it or not. It would not make any difference in your Portuguese. But it is important that you understand when Brazilians use it, right? So this is one of these expressions that you really don't have to use it, but a lot of Brazilians do use this expression. Usually when you want to add something, explain something. Muito bom, gente. If you find more examples of the, um, if you want to help me answer these questions, you can add more examples in the chat because sometimes you can think of different examples. Tá bem? Muito bom. So, Gê, can you make a video on Angola in Portuguese, please? Estou aqui em Angola. I want to know the differences between Brazilian and European. I would love to. You know, I've been looking for people to make videos with me uh, in different Portuguese versions. Um, I have contacted someone from Mozambique, but I haven't heard back. You know, I'm working on that. I want to make videos with people from Mozambique and Angola. So, stay tuned. I will do that soon and I will publish videos about that on my channel. I just have to find someone who also has a YouTube channel. I would like to make a video with someone that also has a YouTube channel to discuss uh, and also has some knowledge of the language so we can discuss the differences. So I'm looking for the right person. Uh, if you have a recommendation, feel free to send me. Uh, if you know someone interesting from Angola or Mozambique or other Portuguese-speaking country uh, on YouTube, feel, uh, send me on the ta ta chat or send me via email and I'll, I'll take a look at that. Tá bem? Muito bom. Reading your comments. Muito bom. Um... So Jennifer, pode falar sobre intercâmbio de línguas? When you say intercâmbio, you mean a language exchange to, to, to have a language partner? Is that what you mean? Usually when you use the word intercâmbio in Portuguese, uh, it's commonly used to when you travel to another country and you stay at someone's house as a student. That's the word that we use, like an exchange student. That's the word, we use the word intercâmbio. Uh, when you have a language partner, we would just say, ah, nós trocamos aulas, we, change, we exchange classes, we exchange knowledge. I think if you're asking me if I uh, think that is a good um, thing to do, I definitely do. If you can find someone, a Brazilian who is interested in learning English and you can exchange uh, knowledge, that would be amazing. I think you should do that. Um, I think it works best if you're already at an intermediate level and you just need to practice conversation. If you do uh, an exchange with someone who is not a teacher, don't expect that person to know how to answer your questions because, you know, Brazilians, they are not, most Brazilians, they're not teachers. So they, will, they will not be able to explain the details. They know how to speak the language because it is, it is they learned when they were a child. They have been speaking Portuguese their entire life, but they will not be able to answer questions and explain to you how to use the language. Uh, for that, I recommend you have classes with a teacher. But uh, just to practice, uh, practice, just like listening and speaking with someone is very, very helpful. And the person can just correct you. Oh, that sounds weird. Maybe we don't speak like that. We speak like that. They would not be able to explain why or how to use the language, but they can tell you if what you're saying sounds right or sounds a little bit strange. So I, yes, I highly recommend you do that. I don't know where you can find language partners. If you, there are many apps available, and also on my Facebook group, I have a huge community of other language learners, and you can have a partner that is not native speaker, but that if you find uh, if you if you want someone to study with, this is also really helpful. My students in my school, they have. Um, they have Zoom classes between themselves just to practice Portuguese and study the material. They do that a lot, and it's very helpful because they can help each other. So uh, don't think that you always have to practice with a native speaker. Of course, it is really good to speak with a native speaker, but if you cannot find a native speaker, you can always um, try to find someone who is also learning Portuguese, similar level, so you can ex help each other and study together and have some accountability, you know? I guess that will help you a lot. And you can find people on my free Facebook group. So just go to my Facebook 
page and click on join the group and you find a lot of pe interesting people there, tá bem? Espero que isso ajude. Oi, Roger, tudo bom? Looking for more questions, gente. How do you translate galera in English? Galera means guys, everybody, people. It's when you talk with a group of friends. You can say, oi, galera. Oi, gente. Hi, guys. Hi, everybody. It's a, not, uh, it's a word that can use for a group of people. Muito bom. <laughs> A minha árvore de Natal ainda não tá pronta. No, my, my tree is not ready yet. I did not have time to decorate it because I had a very crazy couple of weeks. And also, actually, I have a fun story about my tree. I got it from my backyard. I just, it's the first time that I live in a house. I moved upstate a few months ago and my house has, we have a lot of trees around and we had to cut this tree because it was too close to the house. So it was danger to, you know, it could damage the house. So we cut it off and we decided to get a part of the top of the tree to use as a Christmas tree. So it's a funny Christmas tree, but I love it because it's from my backyard. It's not decorated yet. <laughs> Muito bom. How to pronounce the D sound? Really, it really depends. We have many different pronunciations of the letter D in Portuguese. I talk about all these details in my free course. I have a free pronunciation course. You find, we find the link below this video in the descri description of this video. I recommend you take a look at this course. I'll, t I'll tell you all the details about the pronunciations of the letter D. It, it's usually very, very fast explanation. It sounds like a hard D before the letters A and O, like dado, dedo, duvida. Uh, and before the letters E and I, usually it sounds like G, G. But before the letter E, it really depends on the position of the, the word. It varies a lot, depends on the accent. So very quick explanation. I know it's confusing, but my free mini course in pronunciation will help you. Tá bem? Looking for more questions. Ah, você gostou do meu último vídeo? Obrigada. So I made a really fun video last week, it was last week, right, about the differences between Brazilian Portuguese and Portuguese from Portugal. I love making videos about that because it is fun and you can learn a lot about Brazilian Portuguese and also the other variation of Portuguese. If you have not watched that video, go take a look. It was published last week and I have two more videos. I made three videos in total about that topic so far for my channel. So there is one about two about vocabulary and one about pronunciation. So go take a look. It's fun. Muito bom. So this is a question about English. Mm, I'm not sure I'm the best person to answer that. You know, I'm fluent in English, but I never use, I don't use slangs in English. I just use standard language. <laughs> so people, help, help from the audience. How would you say that in English? Falar pelos cotovelos. Falar pelos cotovelos is an expression that means to talk a lot. So talking from your elbow, I don't know why, where does it come from? So it means to talk a lot, but I don't know if you have a similar expression in English. Maybe someone can help us and write in the chat. <laughs> With the bone, looking for more questions. So question from Quinn, what resources do you think are best for improving conversational listening comprehension? Can you understand? I can understand lecture as well, but I struggle with colloquial spoken language. You know, to improve listening, unfortunately, there is no magic trick. You have to listen a lot. I recommend podca podcasts that if you can already understand like s uh, standard Portuguese, let's say like regular journalistic Portuguese lectures, that's amazing. Uh, if you want to go further and understand more fast and colloquial Portuguese, look for podcasts and YouTube videos that use that kind of language. And you have to be persistent. You have to listen to it, try to slow down at the beginning and then watch again at a faster pace. You know that you, on YouTube you can 
uh, speed up the video or slow down the video on the settings of each video so you can do that. And if you can find a podcast that offers transcriptions, you can listen and read at, and read at the same time. That will help you to understand what is going on and just listen again one more time without reading. That will help you to understand better. And it will take time, but it will, it will get easier. So do that as much as possible. Try to listen to Portuguese every day as much as possible. One very good podcast that is very, they use very um, natural Portuguese is um, Café Brasil. Café Brasil. And they offer the transcript of their podcast on their website. So this is a very good one to practice colloquial listening to colloquial natural Portuguese. And at the same time, having the transcript is very, very useful. So go take a look at that. I hope that helps, Quinn. Muito bom. Hmm. Que interessante. Algum livro de português que usam no ensino médio? You know, in Brazil and high school, we use we, we, we read the classics, and they're super hard to read, to tell the truth, to be very honest. So, for instance, we read Machado de Assis. It's amazing. I love his books. They're not easy to read. They're old uh, language, uh, old Portuguese. But it's worth a shot, and you know they are available for free on because they're very old. So they are available for free download on the website dominiopublico.org.br. I talk about that, and I give a lot of book suggestions of books in a video that I made about how to learn Portuguese with books. So I recommend you look for this video on my YouTube channel. So go to my web, main page and type Speaking Brazilian. Uh, learn Portuguese with books, and you find this video, and I give a lot of websites and uh, books suggestions. Tá bem? I hope that helps. Machado de Assis, very good. Very good author. Uh, what do you have to help me learn conjugations, please? So, Steve, I have a very good um, uh, news for you. <laughs> I have a new course that I created last month. Uh, it is new. And it is about verb conjugation. So in this course, it's, it's called Verb Conjugation Crash Course. In this course, I teach all the conjugations that exist in Brazilian Portuguese. And I give you a list of 237 verbs. <laughs> I know it sounds a lot, but they are the most common. Uh, there are many other verbs. But these lists that I made are the most common verbs used in Brazilian Portuguese. And I teach you how to use each conjugation, when should I use this one or that one, and I give you a lot of examples. So I recommend you go take a look. You find this course on my website, and it is available now. It is not, um, does not include uh, live classes, so it is always available. You can, uh, you can sign up whenever you want. Uh, you find it on my website, speakingbrazilian.com forward slash verbos. Or you just go to my site and click in courses and you see um, it is listed there. Okay, so this course, it is, I know that conjugating verbs in Portuguese is hard. It's one of the biggest challenges for everyone, right? So that's why I created this course, because I know that my students need help with that. So go take a look, Steve. And it is recommended for all levels. I have a beginner level. Lessons and intermediate and advanced level lessons, and all the lessons include um, classes in English and Portuguese, so you can choose based on your level. Tá bem? Muito bom. You guys have amazing questions. So Spaniards use mira a lot to call for attention. What do Brazilians use? Mira is olha, olha. So it's the same verb to look, right? Olha. Olha, when you want someone to look at something, is that what you mean? I think so. Uh, or even when it, not necessarily to look at something, but look at you and pay, pay attention to you, right? Olha, let me tell you something. And when people sometimes use nossa, so this word nossa is very interesting because it can be, be used in many different contexts. Uh, the traditional use of this word, it means it's a possessive pronoun. And it means our. For example, this is our house. I would say, essa é nossa casa. 
right? But then what you hear Brazilians using all the time is just the expression, nossa. So when you see something surprising or you are something that you were not expecting, could be something good or bad, it really depends. Uh, it's like, it's similar to, whoa, what? So it's an expression, it's an, uh, an interjection, right? Nossa. It comes from uh, an expression, a longer expression. It is Nossa Senhora. <laughs> it is a religious expression originally, but today this expression Nossa, it is, there is no religious meaning. It's just, it just means, whoa, when you're surprised at something. Nossa, what happened? Whoa, what happened here? So when you're surprised, it could be bad or good. Depends. Muito bom, gente. Very good questions. Mm. <laughs> oh, I like that comment. So, vai embora, you do like the movement with your hands. That's interesting. So, do you recommend any Brazilian radio stations? So, I want to ask the community, do you guys recommend any Brazilian radio stations? I have one recommendation. I really like CBN. CBN, CBN. They have many um, stations, they have many programs. And my favorite, this is the advanced level, but I love the show uh, with Professor Pasquale, Professor Pasquale. He is amazing, he teaches Portuguese to Brazilians. So it's high level Portuguese, advanced Portuguese. If your level is advanced, you're gonna love Professor Pasquale. He's amazing, he explains everything really well. He always like gives, um, use the songs to explain what he's teaching. It's a really fun podcast, but it is advanced level, okay? I don't recommend CBN for beginners. Intermediate and advanced, you will like it. So go take a look. CBN. CBN. Muito bom. Looking for more questions. Oh, so the pronunciation of the words O oh and O, oh, I, I think you're thinking about the pronunciations of the vowels, the o, open O and the closed O. I also made a video about that. I recommend you go take a look to see more explanations and examples. Uh, you'll find on my YouTube channel, uh, open O and closed O. So just type speaking Brazilian, open O, and you'll find the video. I'm gonna give you a very short explanation. So when you say grandma, we use the open O. Avó, ó. Oh. This ó oh sound, the open ó, oh, is very similar to the expression in English that we have when you see something cute. What do you say? Ó, oh, ó. Oh. It's also the, that, that is also the word ó, oh, right? A W E. Is that how you write it? I don't remember now. <laughs> I'm very bad at spelling, like in my head. So ó, oh, ó. Oh. We do have this sound in English, so try to connect. It's just the way that you write is different, right? But try to connect with this sound of these words. Avó. Ó. Oh. And grandpa is avó with the closed o. Oh. And this closed o oh is similar to the pronunciation of the letter o oh in English in the words old, cold. It's the same o oh sound. Okay, so remember to connect that and you'll be able to pronounce these words easily. But if you're a Spanish speaker, it's a more hard work for you. You can do this, just practice. I know that for, for Spanish speakers it's harder because you don't have that, those sounds in your native language. So you have to practice more and do a lot of exercises and practice. Speak out loud many times. That will help you practice pronunciation. Tá bem? You have so many good questions. Hmm. Okay. Um, so I see that you're asking again about the word nossa. What is the best way to say you miss someone? There are many different ways that you could say that, but in Brazil we use we commonly use the word saudade. There is no translation uh, into English of this word, like not in one single word. So you could say, when you are talking with someone and you wanna say, I miss you, you could just say one word, saudade. 
saudade. It means I miss you when you're talking to someone, right? Uh, but if you want to say I miss her, then you have to say a complete sentence. You should say eu tenho saudade dela ou eu tenho saudade dele. You could use different verbs here. The word saudade is not a verb. It's a noun and means the feeling of missing someone or the feeling of missing something. Uh, so you could use in a sentence, you could use with different verbs. You could say eu tenho saudade or eu sinto saudade or eu estou com saudade. Three different verbs can be used to make, create sentences with the word saudade. But if you're talking with someone, if you want to say, I miss you, you could just say saudade. I say that all the time when I'm talking with my mom, my family, friends from Brazil. I just say saudade means I miss you. But if you want to say, I miss her, him, them, then you have to make a sentence. If that helps, I have, again, I have a video. I have so many videos available on my YouTube channel. You have to look for them. I have a video about the word saudade. So it's one of my first videos. I look so awkward on that video because I'm like, I was not used to make videos. And so it was like, I, I sound like a, I look like a robot speaking, but <laughs> I speak very slowly. So it's a very good video for beginner level students. Go take a look. Speaking Brazilian, saudade. And I explain how to use this word and I give many examples. Tá bem? Muito bom. Ok, looking for my questions. Eu tenho contatos aqui. Eu quero seus contatos, Shannon, por favor. Quero fazer um vídeo com alguém de Moçambique, vai ser tão legal. So I'm going and scrolling down now because it's hard to read all the comments. I'm going and scrolling down to see more um, questions. We're reaching to the end of this Q&A, but I have so many questions here, so I want to stay with you a little longer. This is the last Q&A of this year, so it's a special Q&A for me. Thank you for staying with me. Então, vamos ver qual é a sua comida favorita do Brasil. My favorite food, Brazilian food, is muqueca. Muqueca, but I'm vegan, so I don't eat uh, the real, reg the traditional muqueca is made with fish. But I don't eat fish, so I make uh, moqueca with uh, plantains, banana da terra, <gasps> so good, and veggies. It's delicious. It's like a stew made with coconut milk, uh, uh, leite de coco, and then the oil, it's like red palm of, palm of uh, oil, red palm oil. Oh, it's so delicious. It's actually a, a, a dish uh, with African influence. We have a lot of uh, the northeast eastern area of Brazil, we have a lot of dishes that have, that were brought uh, to Brazil from the Africans, with, from Africa, with the Africans. Muito bom. More questions. Eu amo moqueca, gente, é tão bom. I actually made a video cooking a moqueca, a vegan moqueca. You find this video on my channel if you're curious to try a Brazilian dish. So the verb poder, this is an interesting question. We have the verb poder, uh, we have past tense, like ele pode, closed o, o, and we have present tense, ele pode. So it changes the tense. So pode is past tense and pode is um, present tense. I don't think pode has uh, an acute accent. Uh, the, the accents rules changed in Brazil, so I'm not sure which of one of these words have accents, maybe none of them. So past tense is closed, o, pode, and present tense is open, o, pode. You can double check that on the website, conjugue, <laughs> I have to say in Portuguese, conjugação.com.br, I'm going to type in the comments here. This is a very good website to check conjugation of verbs. So this verb is verb poder, is an irregular verb. So if you go to this website, conjugação.com.br, and then you type poder, and you see all the conjugations, and you see, pay attention to past tense and present tense, you see it's the same word, but in past tense we pronounce pode, a third person, right? 
pode e pode in present tense. So it's a very, it's tricky. You have to get that pronunciation of the letter O, open and close. That's important when speaking Portuguese. Some words, you have to, to make the distinction. Muito bom. So just talking about this um, website, uh, it is a website for for reference, right? Just to for consultation when you have a question about conjugation. Don't spend too much time there because you just get crazy with all the conjugations. So don't do that. Just use, uh, oh, I have a question about this conjugation. Then you can go there and double check. But don't spend hours studying the website because it just it's overwhelming. <laughs> Muito bom. Qual é o seu app favorito para aprender vocabulário? You know, all the apps are really good to learn vocabulary. My favorite one is Anki, Anki Web. I'm going to write in the, in the chat again. Uh, the online version of this app is uh, free, and the, um, the phone version is paid. So if you want to use a free version, just do the use the online version. And this, I like this app because they don't give me the words, I add the words that I want to learn. And I really like that methodology. So when I'm studying a language, I'm, I make a lot of notes. For instance, I watch a video and French, and I make a lot of notes of things that I, new things that I'm learning. And then I get those uh, phrases or words and I add to the app, to the Anki web app. And, and then I study, and the app will make remind me when I have to study that card, so it will help me to retain vocabulary using the space repetition system. Okay, so this is a very good app, but of course, if you prefer to have to use an app that already gives you all the words, you can use Duolingo or in any other app. Uh, it's just like sometimes to me they give me so many random sentences and words that I'm not really interested in learning. That's why I really like Anki, because then I add the words and sentences that I really want to learn and memorize. Muito bom. I think that Duolingo and all these apps, they are great tools as an extra resource. I don't think that you can learn a language using only Duolingo. You can learn some words, vocabulary. Uh, I think that it, um, to lear really learn a language, you need more. I recommend a combination of many things. I recommend YouTube videos, podcasts, apps, and um, of course, the best way is to have a teacher to help you with your Portuguese or any other language that you're learning. Having um, Now there are so many online courses available. So if you're learning Portuguese, Go take a look at the courses that I offer. Uh, these courses are the best way to learn Portuguese online. And in addition to the courses, then yes, I recommend using apps because they will give you extra uh, information, extra vocabulary. It will help you to be in contact with the language a little bit every day. But I think that learning only with an app, it's really hard. But, but yes, definitely use the apps. They are really good. Muito bom, gente. Very good questions. Okay. Oh, I love this question, Shreya. I haven't heard the verb socorrer in a long time. It has a very similar meaning, but I think that the word socorrer is more when the person is in danger. The person really needs help. It's something more intense. And the verb ajudar can be something very simple. The person not necessarily needs help, but you want to help anyway, right? So, socorrer, I, I would only use that verb if there was some kind of accident. Uh, it's similar to, uh, it's not exactly to rescue, but it, it's almost that. It's, you, you, the person really needs your help and you're going to help that person, right? In ajuda, it's more commonly used. You can use ajuda for everything. It could be something very serious or it could be something very light, very simple. Uh, the verb that we use every day is the verb ajuda. The verb socorrer is not very common, but exists. And yeah, I haven't heard, seen it in a long time. Very similar, but ajudar is more common. Socorrer is more for more important, serious things. 
And when, when you're asking for help, you could say, preciso de ajuda. The word socorro is only really if you are in danger, like you're being kidnapped. You could say, socorro, <laughs> help, I need help. But we don't use this word if you need help uh, taking the trash out. Then you use the word ajuda. Eu preciso de ajuda para levar o lixo para fora, por favor. So you see there are, uh, socorro is really when some, you are in danger, you need help, your life is at stake, then you use the word socorro, tá bem? And ajuda is more, you can also use ajuda, like eu preciso de ajuda if you are in danger as well, but the word ajuda we use in many, many different contexts, very simple, every day. Muito bom! Excelente! Muito bom, gente. So many good questions. So we are getting to the end of this uh, Q&A. I'm reading your comments to see if I find other questions. If I haven't answered your question, you can uh, copy and paste. Qual é a minha nacionalidade? Eu sou brasileira. I'm Brazilian, but I live in New York. I love New York. I miss São Paulo, though. Eu tenho saudade. Se I'm using the word saudade, eu tenho saudade de São Paulo. Paulista, eu sou paulista de coração. Eu não nasci em São Paulo. I was not born in São Paulo, but I lived in São Paulo for 10 years. So I feel like I'm from there because I, l I left my home, my the place where I was born, the city where, where I was born when I was a child. Muito bom! Como você pronuncia chá e já? So, chá is like the S-H, chá. Já, so the difference between these two pronunciations is that one is voiced and the other one is unvoiced. Chá is unvoiced. If you place your hand here and you pronounce the word chá, there is no vibration of the vocal cords. Sha, sha. But the word ja is very voiced. It's a very strong sound, and all of the cords are vibrating when you pronounce ja, ja. Okay. But phonetically, they indeed they are very similar. The difference that one is voiced, the other one is unvoiced. Muito bom, gente. They're very similar, Laura, uh, alias, and inclusive. So when you are talking about something and you want to add something, or you just remember something that you want to add, you could say, hmm, alias, uh, oh, I'm going to the city, alias, I think I'm going to meet my friends. Alias, eu acho que eu vou encontrar meus amigos. So it's something that you remember that you want to add. Many different contexts you can use this word. Inclusive, similar, inclusive, Gostaria de encontrar. Yeah, it's very similar. I cannot think of differences right now, but I'm sure they can. Uh, they have. There are some differences between these two words, but they are very similar in this context that I just talked about. They can be used interchangeably. Um, inclusive, also, is, it can be used in another context when you're talking about. This is also included then you cannot use the word alias, right? When you're talking about something that included in something, for instance, you could say, mm, like in my courses, I teach all these skills you need to learn, inclu including uh, speaking and listening. Then I could use the word inclusive, I could not use the word alias in this context. I would say, nos meus cursos, eu ensino todos os as habilidades de língua, inclusive falar, escutar e escrever. So, including, then you have to use the word inclusive, tá bem? Not the word aliás. I hope that helps. Muito bom, gente. Yeah, so this is a good uh, vocabulary example, Ross. Pronto socorro means emergency room. Yes, yeah, so it's like when you go, when you have to go to the emergency room in Brazil, it is called Pronto socorro. Pronto means like immediate help. That's the little translation. Immediate help. You go to pronto socorro to receive immediate help. Muito bom, gente. 
<laughs> okay, so this class is a bit longer than I expected. I usually just stay for 30 minutes. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so happy to be here with you. I hope you all have an amazing holiday season. So how do you say happy holidays in Portuguese? I'm making a video about this, so don't miss the video. It will be published in about two weeks, I think. But it means uh, we say boas festas. Boas festas, I'm writing in the, the chat. Boas festas. So this is the last live Q&A, but I'm still publishing videos every week, so don't miss my next videos. And if you want, if you have time to study Portuguese during this holiday season, go take a look below this video we have in the description to see all my free resources. If you're interested in my courses, go take a look and add your name to the waiting list so you receive emails from me. The enrollment will be open next month and classes start in February. And thank you so much. I love you and I will see you. In, a, uh, in our next Q&A next month in January in 2022, in 2022. <laughs> um beijo. Tchau, gente. Hmm.